I am very pleased to be with you today uh, and uh, pleased that this House can play a very important advisory role to the European institutions uh, and shines a spotlight on what I believe is a critically important area of agriculture policy. As you know, we are now beginning the period of reflection and consultation in relation to the modernization and simplification of the common agricultural policy. And the involvement of the Committee of the Regions will be of real significance. You are the people who have your finger on the pulse at grassroots level across Europe. And I want to assure you that I will listen closely to the feedback that you deliver from your local communities and your regions. Your buy-in will be very important in any work that we do to improve the common agricultural policy, which is a policy for all Europeans. Indeed, uh, as you have just said, the first Vice President, Mr. Timmermans, has written to you, Mr. President, to formally ask the Committee to draft an opinion on the modernization and simplification of the policy. And I look forward to your input and contribution as we look to shape an agricultural policy for all Europeans post-2020. I also want to restate my gratitude for the central role that you played in shaping the Cork II Declaration, which outlines an ambitious 10-point plan for a better life in our rural areas. Today we are focusing on a policy area which I have made it my business to highlight again and again. Generational renewal is an absolute imperative for anyone who believes, as I do, that farmers and rural communities are a vital piece of the puzzle in confronting many of our societal challenges. We are all familiar with the worrying demographics that the farming population of the EU 27 is getting older at a rapid rate. For each young farmer aged 35 years or younger, there are approximately nine far farmers that are older than 55 years. And this is not a new phenomenon, and significant efforts and funding have been poured into tackling this problem. The 2013 reform of the CAP brought in a mandatory top-up payment for young farmers through the creation of a nat national reserve. And this was a welcome and progressive change. But it must be remembered that the total amount allocated to young farmers in the direct payments envelope has decreased from 1.33% to 1.23% between 2015 and 2016. This is a, a negative trend. Under rural development, there is also the specific priority area that is dedicated to new entrants, facilitating the entry of ad adequately skilled farmers into the agricultural sector, and in particular, generation of renewal. Young farmers and other new entrants are eligible for specific support measures under this focus area, but also for measures that target farmers in general. The following rural development measures are particularly relevant for young farmers. Business start-up aid is targeted to young farmers, in order to facilitate starting their professional activities. Annual payments or one-off payments are available for holders of small farms who transfer permanently their holdings. Advisory services and specific training can be tailored to the needs of young farmers. So these are all steps in the right direction. But I am fully convinced that we need to do more. That is why I have very deliberately and very publicly mainstreamed generation renewal as part of the planning of the future CAP. Many of the priorities we need in order to build the future CAP will be mostly effective, del effectively delivered by a new generation of farmers. When President Juncker and I announced a communication on the future of the CAP last December, we pointed out that generation renewal is an issue that goes far beyond the reduction in the average age of farmers in the European Union. It is also about empowering a new generation of highly qualified young farmers to bring the full benefits of technology in order to support sustainable farming practices in the European Union. There is no shortage of young people who want to get into farming, but many of them face imposing obstacles. And I want to focus on those barriers which hinder young people from taking up agricultural activity and identify better ways to remove those barriers. Access to finance continues to be a very important barrier for generation renewal in the agricultural sector. Young farmers who are setting up usually have very little collateral at their disposal and therefore are perceived as clients with a higher risk by lending institutions. The introduction of innovative and targeted financial instruments into our rural development programmes is useful to addressing this funding gap. Financial instruments 
can help to tackle the high investment needs required when setting up, notably in view of the low turnover during the first years of their business. The recent omnibus proposal, which outlines further legal options for simplifying the CAP, contains a number of changes that are pertinent for young farmers. These include the simplification of the conditions that are re relate to start-up support, specific provisions to allow start-up support to be provided through financial instruments, and simplification of the eligibility rules regarding financial instruments. Mr. President, I want to move from access to finance to access to land. Recent research and stakeholder consultations confirm that access to land is the most important barrier to enter into the agricultural sector. The limited availability of land, together with competition for land for non-agricultural purposes, puts pressure on prices. Land mobility is low because the older generation does not pass it on to the next generation. This is linked, of course, to the receipt of direct payments or to preferences for keeping the land within the family. Other factors at national level, like fiscal law, heritage law, social law, can complicate matters further. But I am committed to looking at ways to promote and simplify farm transfers between the more experienced farmers and the new entrants. Access to knowledge is also fundamental. Young farmers need guidance as to how different investments can contribute to improving the economic and environmental performance of their holdings. This is why young farmers need access to knowledge about the latest technological developments, as well as best production practices. Our rural development funds support knowledge transfer activities, which includes training, demonstration activities, farm visits, and exchanges for a practice-oriented learning process. Support for short exchange schemes and visits is a novelty of the current programming pre period. It will give farmers the possibility to learn directly and in a practical way from their peers. Besides the exchange schemes supported by rural development, young farmers can also participate in the initiative Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs and take part in the Leonardo da Vinci programmes, which aim to contribute to their professional as well as their personal development. I'd like to make a special reference to Erasmus Plus, which is, of course, one of the most successful EU initiatives, which celebrates its 30, year, 30 years anniversary this year. We are keen to involve young people in Erasmus Plus apprenticeship programmes in agriculture. Apprenticeships allow young people to connect and obtain experience. The Farm a Succession Project, which will be presented during this workshop, is a fine example of a successful Erasmus Plus project which addresses the needs of young people who want to become farmers. In light of all of that, I want to commend Arnold Hatch for his opinion, which I believe is very much in tune with the priorities that I have just outlined. The Hatch opinion acknowledges the importance of young farmers for the economic and social sustainability of our rural areas, and it makes us a welcome specific reference to the Cork II Declaration. I'm trying to do what Deirdre Ford is doing, put Cork on the map. <laughs> It outlines a broadly positive assessment of the young farmer payment, which expresses concerns about bureaucracy and red tape. I hope that the Hatch opinion will form a strong part of the Committee of the Region's submission to the public consultation on the future CAP, which I was pleased to launch just last week. We are asking all stakeholders and those interested in the future of food and farming in Europe to participate in this consultation, to contribute to maintaining and enhancing the relevance of the CAP for all of the people of Europe. The results of the consultation will be used by the Commission to help draft a communication, and this will be published by the end of this year. And it will include, that this will include and conclude on the current performance of the CAP and the possible uh, policy options for the future. So as I have already mentioned, I want this committee to be a vocal part of this exercise. So I'm asking you as your representatives uh, to make your voice heard and to prepare an exploratory position on the future of the CAP. Just last month, I, I told a gathering of young farmers that there will be no better life for rural areas as called for in the Cork II Declaration without a new generation of farmers and rural communities taking up the reins. So I am encouraged by the Committee of the Region's approach to this challenge, and I look forward to working with you in the coming months to identify the best solutions. Thank you.